I thought I'd give you a quick overview of my miter saw station. Now, I used to be super skeptical about miter saws, but then I figured I might want to give them a try. And I got this machine for about half the price because it was scratched up from the factory or whatever. And I set it up on a table, like a normal table. And I thought, what an awkward piece of junk. I'm never gonna use it and I was about to sell it again. But then, for some reason, I started building this station. And from the day on the station was finished, I've been using the saw for almost every project, almost every single day. Now the station mainly consists of a biscuit joint box made from spruce plywood and it has foldable wings. I made them foldable because especially on this side there's still a lot of space behind the station that I want to have access to. And because this is a small workshop, I want to be able to move it around, fold it up, store it away, and so on. To make these wings as strong as possible, I used a continuous hinge to hinge them. And they are supported by these triangles made from Baltic birch plywood. And by turning this piece of threaded rod, I can adjust the wings so that they'll end up in one plane with the table of the saw. This cabinet doesn't have a back panel. Instead, I put what would normally be the back panel in one plane with these triangles and that makes the entire thing extremely stiff and extremely strong. The downside to this is of course that I do only have a very shallow shelf in here, but that's actually quite convenient for storing tape and paint and stuff like that. I used this homemade dual flip up stop lock system and this stop lock has an extension so it can reach right up to the saw blade and this one's just a normal regular stop lock. Now when I'm cutting shorter pieces I use this stop lock and this scale which has zero right here and I'm reading my value right at this corner here. And when I'm cutting longer pieces, I just flip this away and use this stop lock with this scale, which has zero right at the saw blade. Their boxy shape gives these stop locks a lot of rigidity, even though they're just made from wood. I didn't want to get one of the more expensive saws with the rails out the front or some fancy robot arm, because, well, they are a lot more expensive. But I figured by putting this entire station into the corner kind of diagonally, I could get away with one of the cheaper saws with the rails out the back without losing a lot of space. Now my original idea was to build a big dust collector and put it into the space behind here because that's just a perfect location. But I've gone from the idea of having a big dust collector to something like a little more decentralized dust collection system where every machine has its own small dust collector. But I might still build a big dust collector. Maybe. Someday. Now speaking of dust collection, I have a shop vac back in here that's connected to the miter saw. And of course I thought about making a cyclone separator for this shop vac, but I'm currently working on a new design and that's gonna take a while. The saw has two dust ports, 
one up here and then this nice big shroud back here. Now that would have been a good idea, but instead of making it a smooth transition into the shroud, they put this little knob here and what that means is a lot of the shavings that end up flying in this direction hit this little knob and get deflected outwards, which is, yeah. It looks really bad in these clips and I don't have any data to back that up, but I'd argue that the saw still catches about 80% of the dust, especially the very fine particles. How do I know that? Well, when sunbeams fall through the window, all the fine floating particles are quite visible and there's a very significant difference between the saw at work with and without dust collection. A lot of folks like to build dust hoods around their saws, but I think that does only really make sense if you have a high volume dust collector, not so much for a shop vac. And because this saw seems to catch most of the fine particles anyway, I really don't see the need for a dust hood. Now other than that, that seems to be quite a decent saw, it's variable speed which is nice. I would however prefer a vertical grip which it kind of has, I guess, no. Because a vertical grip would allow for a little bit more controlled plunging because I could then kind of use the torque from the wrist. Now so far this saw does exactly what it's supposed to do. And it seems to be a decent saw with a dust collection flop. Just to address the accuracy issue, I think if you have a decent saw that is set up properly and you're letting the saw guide itself without pushing it off to one side, you're gonna get very good results. At least I do. I hope you found this interesting and till next time.